Bye bye. From Woodland Bowl in Indianapolis, Indiana, the PBA is live on ESPN. Our five finalists are ready to roll. First from Middleburg Heights, Ohio, his six career titles include the 1996 Tournament of Champions, making his first TV show of the season, Double D. Dave Diotramon. The 1998 PBA Rookie of the Year, he won his fifth career title at this season's Japan Cup. From Dallas, Texas, it's Chris Barnes. With his strong showing this week, he wrapped up the all-important eighth spot in tour points. From Victorville, California, Michael Haugen Jr. We've seen him before from Bolingbrook, Illinois. He was fourth and fifth PBA titles this season. One of 16 players of all 300 on TV. Steve Jarris. His last telecast came here at Woodland Bowl in 2000, where he finished second. Today, looking for his first career title from Warren, Pennsylvania, Jeff Zafino. Only two tournaments remain in our PBA season. A crucial step taken today here in Indianapolis. Woodland Bowl, Dave Ryan and Randy Peterson. Randy, let's check in with our matchups this afternoon. In the wild card match, Dave Diantramont, who this week became the 30th player in PBA history to earn over a million dollars. He takes on Chris Barnes, who outlasted Mika Koivuniemi in an epic seven-game match in the round of eight. Semifinal number one pits Michael Haugen Jr. looking for his first career title and Steve Jarris, who looks to become the first three-time winner this season. Jeff Sabino brings an 11-game winning streak in his semi number two, where he meets the wild card winner. Uniroyal Tower Classic, the wild card match. Barnes, Diantramont, we are set to go, folks, from greater Indianapolis, Indiana. A man has won six titles, but has not been on a TV show since last season. As well as his last year. Double lead, Dave Giantramont, great start in the pocket. That's one, only 11 more. Only, like it's easy. It's been fairly easy for Chris Barnes to make shows, but winning has been another story. They will track throughout the day here in Indy. Chris told us before the match today, what he has to do, trust himself, let his natural tools take over. And there are plenty of those. He's one of the best players, technically, the game has seen in many years. But winning in clutch moments has not been easy for Chris Barnes. Covers nicely, leading us to the Baby Ruth real deal matchup ready in the wild card match. Big, huge average difference here, which is going to translate into Chris Barnes throwing more strikes. In his match against Mika Koivuniemi in the round of eight, Chris Barnes struck out in the 10th frame for all four wins. Kind of like that. He likes that very much. That great finish was certainly clutch, Randy. Can he come with clutch performance today when he needs it most is the question. It sure is, Dave, and this ball here, Goes dead flush, the ball in the right lane, looked like he got it wide. The ball actually stopped. That ball there was perfect. One of five players since match play started in September of 01. Gets help 10 pin is Dave Diachmont, who has won for the wild card spot. And his last tour title came from the wild card position. Wichita, Kansas, opening our season last year. Check out this release here, beautiful release. He worked with Hall of Famer Wayne Webb after Reno, changed his thumb pitch, got his hand to get more underneath it, helped him to stay underneath it, started tucking his pinky, and his, he says his roll and release has never been better. 
What a change from 56th heading into this week to 40th now in the tour rankings. Over 91,000 points. 10 pin for double D. <sighs> he told us he has slept much better over the last couple nights when he realized he was bowling so well. There's his road to TV here in Indy, including losing to Michael Haugen Jr. But because he had that great pinfall in the qualifying blocks, he is the wild card. Top qualifier among the losers in the round of eight. That's why Dave Diantraman is back. And he said today, just making the show for him is huge because it vaults him with the points up into that sweet range of being exempt next year, top 50. <laughs> the right lane, lane 70, looks very tight down the lane. Chris's last two shots got a little bit further right then the shot he threw on the left lane, and both shots came up light. However, the bucket, much more difficult to convert than the 2-5 that he almost chopped in the first frame. Big opportunity for Chris, folks. This week, can he vault himself toward player of the year honors? Not with shots like that. <sighs> Saw Chris miss a spare at the U.S. Open. That eventually cost him a match. And this ball was pulled right off the get-go. Chris Barnes is an excellent spare shooter. Suddenly down by 23 pins after leaving the two. Just an eight-pin count. Hoping for help across the deck on the 10-pin. Cannot get it. Now just kind of finishing up the theme on Chris, Randy. 13 career second-place finishes and 18 title matches. So when he makes the title match, he's only winning 27% of the time. Why can't Chris Barnes cross that line, the threshold to true greatness? Well, I asked him that question last night, and he said that, quite simply, he just overthinks and gets in his, way, he gets in his own way. That happened earlier this year, certainly. Three TV shows in three majors this year at the ABC Masters. Trouble. The most unopportune time to throw a split in here at the U.S. Open. Right through the face Greek church he knew as soon as he let it go. And that's been his downfall this year on television. So can he overcome the internal demons, as he calls them, told us. Deontremont wants to take advantage, gets the trip on the nine late. He'll take that gladly. Beautiful, beautiful shot. Dave DeAntremont's dialed in. Ball goes right by the nine pin. And then a little friendly help. Hello. <laughs> all right. Four shots for Dave DeAntremont. All four shots. High flush. See how far underneath his hand is? And it stays there right at release. Come on. Yeah. He liked it. He's overcome wrist surgery in April 2000 to Dave Diantrevant. Other injury issues for him as well. And he told us today he felt a few weeks back before the U.S. Open, he had no chance of exemption. None. Now, he is right there. Back to Barnes. Help on that paralyzer. Ball change. The five goes down late. He agrees with his own ball change. Doesn't now think himself, he changes balls. This ball finally gets to the 1-3 on that lane. Road to TV and Indy, 12 and six overall match play record, 231.81 average. And how about the victory over Mika? He had to get by Norm Duke too, mm -hmm. and afterwards he said, Norm, I, I wanna wish Brandon, your son, happy birthday, because it is Brandon's birthday today. That's the least I could do for taking you out. Whoa, there is a balk. That's a shot clock violation, first one. Twenty-five seconds from the time the ball comes back out of the ball return to throw your next shot. First violation is hundred dollars. The next violation, five hundred. Could get expensive real quick. Oh. Ten pin as he tries to rebound from that. 
This year, he's fourth on the money earnings list. You're talking about fines he's got to absorb. Walter Williams Jr. is the leader over 223,001. Yeah, and he really needed this hit here to give him a double and get him back in the match. Ten pin. Chris Barnes is in a huge hole after his early open frame. 33 pin deficit against Dave D'Entremont. When we come back, we'll talk about the oil pattern and also about who's got a good shot from our TV show today to make player of the year. Is it Chris Barnes? Maybe. Perhaps Steve Jarris. We break it all down when we return to Indianapolis. ESPN's exclusive live coverage of the PBA Uniroyal Classic is brought to you by Uniroyal, the official tire of the PBA Tour. Uniroyal Tire is trusted by American families since 1892. By Cambridge Credit Counseling, log on to nodebt.com and find out how good it feels to be debt free. And by Miller High Life, to live simply, proudly, boldly, manly, this is the High Life. 25th time the PBA Tour has returned to this great city of Indianapolis, Indiana. The last time the Miller High Life opened 2001, Dave Arnold was a winner that year. Plenty of Hoosier and Boilermaker fans around, Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson, and our entire crew live coverage here from Indy. Good chance for Steve Jarris and Chris Barnes, although Chris really has struggled in the opening match in the wild card to make a real statement for player of the year honors today. They sure can with a win for either Steve Jarris or Chris Barnes. They can certainly add their names to the list of player of the year, which is shaping up to be the tightest race I can remember on the PBA tour. Uh, Chris Barnes with seven telecasts leads the tour in that category. And Steve Jarris looking to become the first player to win three times on tour this season. They'll have to get it done on pattern A. Pattern A had two hook spots this week, one from the extreme outside part of the lane, the first two boards, the second around the seventh, eighth board. The straight guys will be playing out. You see Dave Deontremont and Chris Barnes are using that same hook spot down the lane, but playing much further left. The key this week, carrying the corner pins. This season, Pattern A played much higher than it did last year. However, this week, only one 300 game by Amleto Monicelli because of the pin carry. Numbers for Diatramat are very favorable. After Chris Barnes had his struggles. Ooh, gets a break to avoid a split. He'll take just the four pin gladly. Make a shot coming out of commercial, Dave. He gets a nice break here, the 4-9 standing up. And one of his friends comes over and takes the 9 out. Double D of 524 win percentage, Randy, on TV. Of the five finalists today. And he just does take care with the hook, not the straight. Spare ball, a plastic ball you normally see here. Let's take care of the 4-pin. He's the only one of the five finalists who's got a 500 or better career TV record. 22 and 20. Thirty-two pin advantage. How about the way he holds the ball? Well, he's tucking his pinky, which is what he used to do prior to his wrist surgery. And what that helps him do is helps him to create more power at the bottom of the swing. It tightens up the fingers and the finger holes. Number ten goes down late. Sometimes when professionals are pushed to the limits like Dave Deontremont was this week, knowing he needed a good week to make the all-exempt field for next year, it makes you do extraordinary things like what you just saw there, and he's been doing it for seven straight frames. Dave has made TV before in this very center. That seems to be a resounding theme with our final five today. Chris Barnes is trying to get back on track. Moments ago, we mentioned possibilities for Chris Barnes, Steve Jarris as player of the year. What do you think? Steve Jarris makes another TV show. His family is here. The two prior times his wife and the twins have attended, he's won tournaments. Could be three for three. Three titles. He'd be the only one to win three on tour this year. Is that enough for Steve Jarris? Maybe. I think that he has to win this week and also in, in two weeks of the World Championships. Chris Barnes certainly needs to win at least one of the next two weeks. In a one-game match on television, 
after practice, All I can do is throw it. you have to make decisions as to move. what equipment you're going to throw move. and what line you're going to play. And sometimes it's a guess, an educated guess, but sometimes it's a guess. And sometimes, in Chris Barnes's case, he guessed wrong. Down 32 pins right now in the wild card match, and Chris is not pleased at all about it. Good news for Chris Barnes. He is number six in points, so he's locked in the top eight, the round of Super 16, which comes up in two weeks at our season-ending world championship. Michael Haugen, Jr., with a great week here in Indianapolis. That is why he is number eight on the line today, 25,000 points. Big points, double and $120,000 five-year exemption is at stake in two weeks in Ypsilanti, Michigan to finish our season. Double D, all 10 down. 42 pin lead. Strikes in the seventh and eighth. Told us today before the show, a couple years ago in Texas, he had that same sort of feel where he returned to the center a few years in a row and made shows consecutively. Why do bowlers have the comfort level in a center from year to year? Sometimes it's just, you know, the pin carry. The lanes themselves, if uh, it's, it's the same surface that you've played on years past, for whatever reason, no matter what oil pattern they put out, your ball reaction always seems to be something that's uh, conducive to allow you to, to score high. It's the case for Dave D'Anchemont. It was the case for myself here in Indy where I won in 99 and I came back and made the show the next year in 2000. Two completely different lane conditions. If you'd like to learn more about lane conditions, being here this week, PBA.com is your site to shop for all the latest officially licensed PBA merchandise and apparel. The new online PBA store features such items as PBA hats, T-shirts, says Barnes Strikes, sweatshirts, polo shirts, posters, bowling pins, see the seat cushions, automatic double you ever seen in your life. and much, much more. So That'd click on to PBA.com right today. What Chris Barnes is referring to, if you didn't hear what he said, he said, you want to see an automatic double? You're going to see it right here. And the reason why he said that is because this game is basically over. And you all, <laughs> as a professional out here on the tour, you always strike when you don't need to. No one on tour. What a surprise. No one on tour has anyway. three major. It's my good luck charm for most of this week. Appearances and three TV appearances as well in those majors. No player on tour has made seven TV shows except Chris Barnes. This match has ended now officially, nice. so we're going to fast track it to the end. Cannot get out of the gates. That's been his problem. Can't get out of the gates. Well, he struggled all week. He never won the first game in any of his match. But let's not take anything away from what Chris Barnes has accomplished this year. He's made the telecast in all three majors. Seven shows, like you said, Dave Ryan. He's made more money than he made last year. His only win, however, coming in Japan at the beginning of the season. And the incredible story, folks, continues for Dave D'Entremont who at the beginning of the new year, prior to the U.S. Open, the ABC Masters, two of our four majors, was convinced he would not bowl on tour next year. He said this morning, I thought I was out of it for sure. With his late run starting at the U.S. Open in Southern California, a good appearance there. He has stayed consistent this week. And he's flying his way right into the semifinals now. He said today, hey, I'm satisfied with just making the show. Well, how about the semis? He'll take on Jeff Safino next. For the first time ever on TV, Steve Jarris and Michael Haugen Jr. will match up. Haugen Jr. has not been on TV in a long time. He's never won a PBA title. Jarris continues his bid for Player of the Year honors. Uh, and we appreciate all that he's done, uh, and we're so proud uh, that you came out to see Mike and, and see the bowling uh, this evening. But again, Mike, congratulations. Uh, Steve, thanks to you and everyone with the PBA, uh, not only the last couple of years, but all through, through the years. Um, obviously, bowling has, has been my life. Uh, everything that I have is from bowling, from, from a kid on. I met my wife through bowling, my children. Uh, everything has to do with bowling. So. We will miss Mike Albee on the PBA Tour, the only player ever to be Rookie of the Year, Player of the Year in separate seasons, and the only ever winner of a Super Slam. Trying to win his first ever PBA Tour title is Michael Haugen Jr. Your late run here, second half of the season, Michael, has put you right at number eight.
as you lead toward the round of Super 16, two weeks of the World Championship. Are you surprised at this year's success? Absolutely. I mean, I've been working hard, and things have just fell into place. It's just been a great season. Well, good luck to you. Thank you very much. Randy's ready to go. Says he's a bit nervous, but he's fully prepared. Joining me in the booth now, the great Mike Albee. And Mike, uh, I just wanted to say how much uh, your presence uh, we're going to miss on this tour. And, and when you think of ambassadors for bowling, you know, you, you always thought of Dick Weber. And I think that you have to be added to that, to that same elite uh, group with him. So, uh, again, congratulations on a great career. And, and we're going to miss you. Well, thanks, Randy. I'm going to miss the people. That's probably what I'm going to miss the most and the competition, obviously. But, uh, you know, it's been fun here for 26 seasons. Well. And you were fortunate enough to win in this building. I was, and that's probably the, a highlight for me that really kind of, after three and a half years of not winning, I was able to win here in 84, and it kind of got me going. It's always nice to win in front of the, uh, the hometown crowd and friends and family. It is. Good start for Steve Jarris. And Mike, uh, you and I before the telecast was Speaking of your latest endeavor in building the hockey rink, the ice rink, which is nearly complete, right, here in Indy? Yeah, we're almost done the Arctic Zone, and uh, we're just up the road uh, in Westfield, Indiana. And uh, it's been a lot of fun, a lot of work, a lot of fun, but the bowling center is doing well, and, and uh, it's something that's very close to the bowling industry and in an entertainment industry. How'd you get started with that? Uh, I followed the 1980 Olympic team and, right. and got into hockey. And oh. and uh, you know, I got into that and then just followed it all the way through. Trying, bro. <laughs> it's only the first frame, though. Mike, you know players like <sighs> Haugen Jr. get so nervous, and having not been on TV for a while, how'd you deal with your nerves? All your great wins and TV. I, you know, I would come in early before the show started and just get used to all the TV flights and just enjoyed every moment of being on TV. Oh, you like that? You guys like that? Our Baby Ruth Real Deal matchup, Mike Olga Jr., Steve Jarris. Very tight race here. A little bit higher average, a little bit higher strike percentage. And early on, Michael Haugen Jr.'s got it going with a double. But Steve Jarris, he took out, he took me out in game seven with a big 250 game. And he's been red hot. Two wins. I think. Far none, this is Steve Jarris' finest year. You know, Steve's always been a very solid, consistent player, but now he's winning. And, and that's the big difference. And the confidence with that just can carry on all the way through. Yeah, it's a scary, it's scary place to be for his uh, <laughs> opponents because now he truly believes he can win each and every time that he steps on the lanes. You know, you always maybe would expect a, a little bit of help from Steve, but he doesn't give you that help anymore. you got to take it from him. I witnessed that firsthand yesterday. Looks for a double third frame, guys. Yeah. And it's game on. I feel better. Come on. This ball is going to drift just a pinch light, catch the swish zone. That's the beauty of these uh, new bowling balls that we're using in the, uh, in the this new modern era of bowling. Mike, it wasn't always like that back in the 80s when you and I started. <laughs> Not at all, Randy. Joined by PBA great Mike Garvey in the booth. That looks high a little bit. Whoa! Oh, there yeah. goes the four. That's one for me. The emotional <laughs> Michael Haugen Jr. takes it gladly. Now, I don't, know, I don't know about you, Mike, but this has never happened to me uh, in my 22 years on tour, trip down. four. That's the kind of nerves I want to have right there. <laughs> That's a nice, huge break. Settle down and make a shot here. Did you ever get the feeling in, in all the wins that you've had on the tour where you, you had a week where no matter what you did, everything just went your way, and, and, and it ended up you did win that week? You do. You get very comfortable, get settled in, and, and uh, comfort is the main thing on, for the guys on tour. They all have the talent. Guys, to get here, Michael Hockey Jr., 12-4 and four match play record over a 231 average, and Dave Diantremont, a seven-gamer last night here at Woodland Bowl in Indy in the round of eight. That made Double D the wild card, who just knocked off Chris Barnes. So Diantremont through to the semifinals. Both of these bowlers would like to join Dave Diatramon in the next round. Looking for help! Oh! Hey, how about your trip for it? Take my bird dog messenger, whatever you want to call it. And that dog can hunt. hunt. <laughs> that dog's a hunting. Watch this. Head pin goes to the sidewall. He's got shrapnel flying everywhere. Oh, yeah. Just as good as a trip four, isn't it, Mike? Shows you how loose his arm swing is. Yeah, if you're pinching it at the bottom of the swing, those you don't, don't happen. Yeah, that doesn't happen. <laughs> oh, 
Just out 10. Perfect. Still there. Well, Mike Garvey is in the hockey business this afternoon. The two top teams in the NHL Pacific Division face off on ESPN. But we have getting the Bach off of the Sharks trying to stop Billy Garen, Mike Padano, and the Dallas Stars. NHL special today, 4 o'clock Eastern time. For more, log on to ESPN.com. The Stars, four points behind San Jose with a division lead, each 145 goals allowed. Marco Stern, bad news for the Sharks. Out for the year, broken leg this week. That could really hurt them in the playoff run. We'll see. It's all coming up. Another big shot for Haugen Jr. Well, Mike, what do you think? You know, he just keeps putting them in there, and obviously you need the breaks, but he's packing them up with great shots behind the breaks. Didn't get much better than that. And he knew that it was only going to be a matter of time for Michael Haugen Jr. This year has been bowling great on just about any pattern they threw out there. And he stayed within his game, stayed with what he does best, and that's going nice and straight and direct. You have to. When you play that straight and you play that game, you've got to be confident in it, but also has to be comfortable with it and not try to do what everybody else does. Oh, yikes. Not what you want. Should have stopped. Should have stopped. Heard those guys practicing over there. Four, six, seven. And a tough split. Mike, all behind your face. Well, he's he's got to get two. I mean, you know, he's going to hope for a break to bounce it out. But uh, that's a, a horrible break with uh, Steve Gerald sitting on a string right behind him. Come on out of there. All right, he was hoping for something off the back of the deck. Mike Alby, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks, guys. PBA legend who's now into the ice hockey business and following his son play hockey as well. Best of luck to you. Michael Haugen Jr. after an open frame and a little bit of trouble. Head to head with Steve Jarris. Can he win Player of the Year honors? A big impact match for him next. Ask. Beautiful 80 lane center of Woodland Bowl as the PBA Tour continues. At the Unirail Tire Class of Marching to the PBA World Championship. Dave Ryan, Randy Peterson with you. As Randy mentioned earlier, straighter is greater on pattern A. In today's Dexter approach, he shows you how to play the lanes straight. Playing the lane straight is simple if you set up your body and your hips and your arm swing in the right position. Notice how straight up and down in that straight follow through going right at the target. Steve Jarris, who can hook it at times, but he's found greater success this season going nice and straight. Notice how upright the body is. You don't see that big giant lean like a Robert Smith would have. Same thing with Jeff Safina, almost standing straight up and down. The one thing I like about going nice and straight is under the heat, in, in the heat of battle, when the adrenaline is really flowing, you tend to get aggressive and fast. That's okay if you're throwing the ball straight. That's exactly what Steve Jarris told us before the match today, Randy. I'm gonna go right at him. Hoping for shots like that. Steve Jarris is relentless. In my match against him yesterday, we went seven games. And I think Steve Jarris had one open. Yes, he had one open frame. He left a pocket 7 10. It was the only open frame he had. And he did a lot of that. Richie Allen and myself took him to the limits. Mm. Sorry about that, partner. I know you're. Working very hard to make an exempt field next year. Thank you. Had a 3 1 lead on Randy. Come on. And wife June is here. The twins are here yet again. Evan and Hannah, almost five years old. <laughs> June has been to two tournaments so far, and both times Steve has won. Who was that? Toledo. And again in Dallas, hoping for three for three. They are going to the World Championship, by the way. Oh, no. Was that a Mike Alby face there? No, that had to be Steve Jarris, was right? it? An old shot? Like Steve Jarris when he was like 17, maybe? Because you know he had facial hair when he was in high school. As thick as Ooh, that mustache that was. embarrassing for Steve. Bottom of your screen, the all-exempt field so far, starting with our points leader, Brad Angelo, who has not won on tour, but he's clinched his spot. These guys are in, folks. All the names you see in the bottom of your screen. And there are 29 so far who have clinched. 12 winners, 17 via the points. Michael Agron Jr. is one, of course. He's number eight in points. That's why he has made the round of Super 16. He's locked the course for next year. Robert Smith has won twice. Jason Couch a winner earlier. Tommy Lutz has not won, but a very solid year. Brian Voss made the finals of the US Open. Brian Voss coming into the second half of the swing is in the 70s. Now he's in 18th. 
DJ Archer having a great year, second year player on the tour. And remember, Brian Himmler and Norm Duke both have wins. Because Norm is outside that top 50, the cut line is down to 49. Oh. Jarris trying to stay red hot. Hook. Calling for it to hook. Yeah, right. Just a two pin for him. And that was the other thing I noticed with Steve Jarris when he did miss, he didn't leave himself in an open frame. Ending the six bagger for Jarris. This one here just too firm. Doesn't bite, but it's okay. He only leaves himself a simple two pin spare conversion. Steve Jarris wants to send everybody a message, and here it comes. Messenger. Half pocket swish messenger. And I don't know what you call this, but. It's nice. Leaning tower of something. Got to get a leaning tower in there. Leaning tower of pins. Right. <laughs> oh, oh! Almost help across the deck again. That scout trying to get number 10, but it stays up. And just when you were talking about messengers, he hits one to slide in front. Now, he needs to convert this, and he will, st he will be in the 240s, the high 240s. Michael Haugen Jr. can strike out ninth and 10th frame for 245. This match is not over. Great year for Steve Jarris, folks. He's tied his career best with his fifth TV show that also happened in 1997. 23-pin lead for Steve Jarris, bidding for a third title. That would be best on the PBA Tour this year. The ninth year, Steve has made multiple TV shows and eight in a row. Haugen just wants to get himself one tour title. That'll do. That's through the nose, though. Try to make it for the half ten, and you end up messing up. Not good. Three six remain. Keep in mind, too, Randy, that's going to do it. The TV pair was not open to you bowlers that's in do the it. qualifying, and all the way through match play, right? It that had is been, correct. Because we have an eighty lane, lady lane center here, been off to the side. That is correct. Haugen thinks he might be done. Steve Jarris trying to win yet again. Today, ESPN offers more NBA oh, action on a special day and time. Paul Pierce and the Celtics take on Kevin Garnett, Sam Cassell, and the Minnesota T-Wolves, who have been one of the NBA's best teams this year. It's tonight, 7.30 Eastern time, an NBA special on ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com. T-Wolves lead the Midwest in the West with a 44-18 record. Midwest division leaders, third best in the NBA. <laughs> Ten pin. Come on, Steve. Michael Haugen Jr. got off to a red-hot start, and the big split, the sixth frame, unraveled him. You could see it. He never quite recovered from that. He's going to be in the 220s with a spare. Steve Jarrus already in the 220s. Needs to stay behind the foul line, keep the ball on the lane. He will advance. Great year for Steve Jarrus, folks, continues, and that sort of... Ties it to our theme, potential player of the year winner for the first time ever. Could it be Steve Jarris? Randy thinks he's got to win today and have a great showing at least in two weeks of the season-ending world championship. But three titles, hard to argue that. He'd be the only winner if he can do that today here in Indy. And what a great year it's been for Michael Haugen Jr. He got himself into the top eight for the Super 16 at the world championships. And he's done it when not too many straight players have bowled very well on the tour this year. Still that long run will continue. 135 events and counting now for Michael Hagen Jr. without a tour title. But we'll see him in the Super 16 two weeks from now in Ypsilanti. It has been an emotional year on the PBA Tour because bowlers are trying to get into that top 50, which slid down to 49 because Norm Duke has a win and he's outside the top 50. Ricky Ward, Brian Smith are right there on either side of the bubble right now, folks. And it is awfully interesting. It'll go down to the last week of the PBA season in two weeks in Ypsilanti. That's exactly what the PBA wanted when it designed the all-exempt field. Lots of emotion and drama here in Indy and in Ypsilanti in two weeks. Our Miller Milestones feature will profile what's happening on the exempt tour list. We'll hear for bowlers next. 
ESPN's exclusive live coverage of the PBA Uniroyal Classic is brought to you by New Odor Eaters Plus, the only art supporting insole that protects against odor and wetness. By Bear Aspirin, take it for pain, take it for life. And by Geico, a 15-minute phone call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Who's a big bowling fan? About an hour and a half from here. As we see our matchup so far is the Purdue campus, West Lafayette, Indiana. And there's a starting quarterback for Purdue who led his team to the Capital One Bowl game this year. Lost to Georgia 34-27. Still a good season for the Boilers. It's March Madness again. That means it's time to fill out brackets. Purdue is a bubble team. Indiana's going to NIT probably. Next year, the PBA Tour will be in, like an NCAA bracket. 64 players. The field beginning to shape up. We break it all down this week's Miller Milestones. With the threat of tour trials looming, there is a sense of relief among those who have locked up spots, as some even took this week off, to prepare for the World Championship. I'm satisfied I'll be able to bowl next year and kind of see what's going to be happening with the new, uh, the new uh, field and the new tour. Others, both young and old, needed this week to secure a spot. I think at this point I've solidified myself for the all exempt tour next year, and uh, that's probably the biggest comeback I've ever made any time in my life. I didn't think it was possible to to make it for top 50 that quick I mean there's a couple of events left and that's, I'm, I'm pretty safe so it's a relief and uh, you know I'm kind of anxious to get this year over with and, and, and get started in the, in the new PBA next year and what would a tournament be without the talk about the bubble Brian Smith could have lifted himself off that bubble but only made the first cut and find himself right on the cut line veterans Ricky Ward Dave Traber all had strong showings this week to put themselves in position I know I'm right on the bubble. I needed a good week this week to, to kind of boost myself for, for the world championship, and, and hopefully I can bowl as good there as I did here. To go down to the last two weeks, and a little, little bit of lady luck on my side. The veterans push rookie Ronnie Russell. Every day, I swear, I was hoping I went higher as I looked on the computer, but um, now I'm just sort of not worrying about it and taking things as they come. Our own Randy Peterson made a run this week to boost his point total, but he's another strong showing at the World Championships. Other veterans like Dell Ballard Jr. didn't fare so well. Uh, obviously, I'm going to need to make the show next week, uh, the World Championships, because, you know, I want to quit on my terms, not on theirs. So as we look ahead in the season finale, there are three ways to fill up the last spots. I'm so close that all I need is a good week next week. Seems that simplistic, but that's the way it is. The way it looks now with the number situation, it looks like I got to win two matches uh, to try to get to the exempt field, and if not, it looks like it could be 45 games in the fall, or excuse me, in the summer. And then uh, let's just hope we don't have to evaluate my situation at that point. I need to pull with John Daly and uh, win this big one. Uh, if not, I'm going to the tour trial. But every tournament has a Cinderella run like Brian Kretzer last year, and no one knows just whose shoe that slipper may fit. It's been the toughest year I've experienced on tour in my 22 years out here watching. Even though they're my competitors, they're also my friends. And it's been tough to, not only for myself, but some of the other players and what we're going through to try to make that all-exempt roster. A great week for Dave Diatremont, though, has helped him, and he's in the semis. Making a big move in the rankings. How about the lefty Hugh Miller, Dave Traber, and Richie Allen? For the guys who have not, Ronnie Russell, we heard from him a moment ago. More exciting semifinal action next. We are in racing country here in Indianapolis, so racing star Sam Hornish was on the lanes with legend Mike Albee this week. Hornish, the two-time IRL champion with the Panther Racing Team, has now switched to Penske Racing and won in Homestead last week in the IRL season opener. Great to visit earlier today with Mike Albee. I'm sure Sam Hornish does a thing or two about winning big trophies like that. Jeff Safino's never won on the PBA Tour. He's trying to do that today for the first time ever. He's joined now, lane side, by Randy Peterson. Thanks, Dave. The last time Jeff Safino made a telecast was the year 2000 in this very building. Jeff, three and a half years since you've been under the hot lights. How do you feel? Hot. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, how else do you feel? I feel like uh, this is going to be my week. Uh, it's been good all week, and let's get it on. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Dave Ryan with a win today. It'll be his first, and he'll also secure a spot on the all exempt roster for next year. As we saw on that stat, Randy, a moment ago, 113 events without a title, where Jeff Safino is only bowling seven events this year, just kind of a part-time player on our tour. 
but has he ever made a full-time impact this week in Indy? Nice little break late. Eight pin goes down. A good start for Jeff Safino from Warren, Pennsylvania. Very nice start for Jeff Safino. Keep in mind, this is his third telecast ever. His last two telecasts, he finished second both times. And both times, lost to Doug Kent. Nice milestone this week for Dave Diantrema. Like yourself, one of the PBA millionaires. Had to really hurry. And a cranker, Diantrema gets that into the pocket, leading us to the Baby Ruth Real Deal matchup. 10 pin in the game, average difference for Jeff Safino, and there's a reason why. In match play, first round against Walter Ray Williams Jr. He's down 1-3, comes back and wins the next three against the behemoth Walter Ray, and he hasn't lost since. Wow. His next two rounds, he went 4-0, 4-0. In order to do that, you have to throw a lot of strikes. Talk about being hot. Chris and Ward went down. Late help on the 10 for Dave DeAntremont. See the hand underneath and then around. To make a bowling ball hook, you have to start from underneath it. If you start from the side, all it does is spin and never grabs the lane. 11 consecutive games entering today. Just one of the all-time greats in Walter Ray Williams Jr. Not like, <laughs> I mean, an average player on a tour. It was Walter Ray who was down 3-1-2. Coming right at the pins, and yikes, that's a tough split to deal with now, yeah. Four, six, seven. That number is in significant jeopardy. Oh, that number's going to fall. <laughs> wow. Unless he pulls Zamika and bounces it out of the pit. Look out. Oh, gosh, he almost missed. The 4-7 misses the 4, so just an 8-pin count for Zafino, who comes to us from Warren, Pennsylvania. It's about 60 miles east of Erie, PA. Not too far from Buffalo, New York. Now he's down 24 pins. And quite honestly, by not converting two of those pins, I think that was a big mistake because he lost two pins in count. Instead of 28 in the second, he has 26. Two pin for Jeff. And since we're on the two theme, that's the two pin. Dave Diantremont's reaction looks so good in the first match, and it doesn't look like it's going to go away anytime soon. Jeff Sabino is going to have his hands full. 112th on the tour point list, so Jeff Safino has got to win, Randy, as you mentioned. Hey. If he's going to think about exempt status, he told us before the match today, hey, if I don't win here in Indy, I'm going to try to compete and win the world championship. This is where points were, 112, as we mentioned, for Zafino, bottom of the screen there. Chris Barnes is into the round of Super 16, as is Michael Haugen. And Steve Jarrett just keeps on trucking. Wow. Or help. Wow. Top two teams in the NHL Pacific Division face off on ESPN. Goalie of Gany Dabakov for the Sharks. We'll try to stop Billy Garen, Mike Madonna, and the Dallas Stars. NHL special coming your way today, 4 o'clock Eastern time. From Big D, for more long on ESPN.com. Four point difference. San Jose's got the lead, but have suffered some recent injuries. Ron Wilson's team, what a season it's been. In Northern California for them. Three strikes now in a row. Four bagger attempted for Double D. Same thing he did in uh, the Chris Barnes match. They want to make sure we said hello to his whole family, not only in Ohio, but in Utah with his cousin Tony Bonds, who's watching today. And while we're on the subject of families, the PBA family would like to send condolences to U.S. Open champion Justin Romick and his wife Christy. Her mother, Carla Butcher, passed away about two and a half Close. weeks ago. She was instrumental in creating and maintaining a solid youth bowling program in the Indianapolis area. And our thoughts and prayers are with the Romick and Butcher families. Don't leave them all week and start now. 
Well, our reaction on television isn't always the same as it was during the, re during the week, and that's certainly the case for Jeff Safino. I guarantee he didn't leave a whole lot of those. Cashes for seven events. Match play, one of seven events. That's it for Zafino. But as he mentioned to us before the tournament today, Randy, he was at a small 12-lane house in South Bend, Indiana last week. He said, just snug and cozy. Gave him that sort of homespun feeling. And on the same pattern, he won there and just kept the roll going here on pattern A here in Indianapolis. 80-lane mega center we've got at Woodland Bowl here in Indy. And look at that incredible finish as he blanks Tim Chris and Ricky Ward. Well, that's better. If he doesn't make the tour next year, he said to bowl a lot of regionals and then go to tour trials over the summer. Are you still planning on the tour trials right now? If I don't, uh, if I don't make it by uh, doing something beautifully in the World Championships, I'll be at tour trials. But you know what I'm going to do just for you and the guys in the truck? I'm going to win, Nick. I'm going to win in two weeks. That would be spectacular, partner. Down goes the 10 late for Double D, Dave Diantremont. We're talking about tour exemption, been a huge theme, folks, of our tour all year long. 50 players from points and winners. Its list is up to 29 right now. The tour trials are next <coughs> summer, coming up in a few months. And many great players like yourself, Randy, multiple winners, PBA Hall of Fame caliber players are going to be there at the tour trial. There's going to be a lot of guys there. There are a lot of guys that are committed. Del Ballard Jr., myself, if we don't make it, we're going to be there. Diatramon comes in high. You look out. And not the thing to do when you have a, a substantial lead in the match. He's just giving it right back to Jeff Safino, who can step up in the sixth and seventh and draw this to just about an even match. Three, six, seven, ten remain. Got to get the ball over here to the right side of the three, throw the three over into the seven, and the ball will take out the six, ten. See how far left he's starting. Can he convert? No. Oh. No. Eight pin count changes things drastically here. Zafino had that trouble in the second frame, but later in the match, Giantramont has issues. Still a 20 pin lead on Zafino. <laughs> Unirail Tire Classic PBA Tour here in Indianapolis at Woodland Bowl. What a great center this is. Derek Vaught, Tim Jamison, the GM of Auto Tire Car Care Centers, and Unirail Brand Director. Thank you so much for your help and support. As the title sponsor of this great event here in Indianapolis. 25th time the PBA Tour has been here. In all. Jeff Safino just loves this center. <laughs> As you mentioned in your interview with him, he's had success here. Twice has made title matches. But both times has lost to Doug Kent. Right through the nose, wiggling Damn, seven man. remains upright. And Jeff Sabino could have taken the lead with a strike in the sixth and seventh. This oh, shot again pulled. I'm all good all week and then do this. Leaving the same thing that Dave D'Entremont left. In my opinion, needs to convert this to have any chance of winning. No. It's going to be a tough road oh, now. Well. Eight pin count. Dave Diantremont is looking at a great shot to make the finals, folks. Amazing. Days in on the road. The World Championship, plenty of great seats available. Log on to PBA.com. Arena tickets at the EMU campus in Ypsilanti. It's all coming up. The match play leading in is at Taylor, Michigan. Regional Players Championship here in Indiana. And the Stardust Bowl in Maryville, Indiana as well. It's all coming up. Tour trials as well this summer. Randy will be there, Del Bell Jr., plenty of great bowlers all looking for a spot. <sighs> and it looks like Jeff Safino will join them because he's about to get KO'd here by Dave D'Angema. He's down 34 pins. Of course, unless those bowlers win next week at the Worlds, yeah, everyone's headed to the tour trial. I was going to say, don't just start counting us out early. Not yet, partner. We still got one more shot Not at yet. it. Not yet. You know, the one thing about winning, you never forget how. It's just uh, a little tougher to get there. Oh, what shot. Oh, well. And that five pin stays up, and that'll do it. That stupid showing. Look out. Three open frames in the second, the sixth, and the seventh. And he had 60-plus.
frames without an open. 66 to be exact. Heading in the 11 game win streak. Match play after being down at Walter A. Williams Jr. 3-1 in the round of 32. Just blasting the competition to Jeff Safino of Warren, Pennsylvania, but the Entremont has turned the tables in this match. The Entremont's got him right where he wants him now. Uh, right Safino having no, now. no chance whatsoever of getting his ball to the pocket. And Dave Entremont, he's on autopilot right now. But let me just back up for a minute and tell you what Jeff Safino did. Just because he's shooting 160 this game. The last three games against Walter Ray, 277, 259, 255. Next four games, 264, 213, 243, 258. Mm. His last four, 245, 226, 236, 256. Bulls Outside. on, gets on anything but that. The televised pair, and he's got zero bar reaction. And once you've been that successful for that long, playing the lanes a certain way, it's tough to really move around and change a whole lot. And right now, Jeff Safino to have any chance needs to change his entire line and move into where Steve Jarris was and go straight up around seven, eight, nine. Three ten. No, chopped it, and the ten remains up. An open frame late for Diantremont. It appeared this match was all but over, and now Zafino's got another opening. Well, if Jeff Zafino strikes out, he's going to shoot 190. Dave Diantremont going at a 193 pace, meaning if he goes spare, strike, spare, in the ninth and tenth frame, he'll shoot 193. So, again, I don't think Jeff can do it from playing out, though. Well, there's one. And a ball change, something that held line. And you know from sitting on the bench when your opponent suddenly struggles, when he has a stranglehold on the match, that can give you momentum in turn, right? Yeah, it sure can, but I mean, at this point, Dave DeAnchemont could take a spare ball and throw it straight down the lane and just fill frames with marks. 66 frames without an open frame today, three. Here he comes. Uh oh. Change ball sooner. Well, change ball sooner, yeah. Hindsight is 20 20. Is that what they say, Dave Ryan? Look how pretty it. this is now. This is what he was doing all week long. Folks, this was a 45-pin lead a couple Wrong frames back. Change. Now it's a 23. And as Zafino points out, it was all a ball change. Big moment now for Diantremont trying to answer. Boy, one more open frame for Dave Diantremont. Jeff Savino could steal this from him. Big shot. That's how you respond, Dave. Who has not won in 37 events. Six career titles. Got by Chris Barnes. Already here today, as he okay. did in Wichita. October 13th of 02, his last PBA Tour title. Beat Patrick Healy Jr. in the title match, 232-206. And we saw a moment ago what he needs to shut out Jeff Stefino. Unbelievable! Jeff Safino can strike out in the 10th frame and win this game if Dave D'Entremont doesn't convert the 7-10. Unreal. Only three times ever. We've seen pins come out of the back at Woodland before. For the fourth time ever on TV, no, seven up. For Dave D'Entremont, what disaster late in the match for him, another open. That gives Dave D'Entremont 181. Jeff Safino needs two strikes and two pins to steal this away from Double D. Incredible. Every time he's been on TV, Zafino has made the title match. Can he do it again, folks, and steal one from Dave D'Entremont? Gotta have it. Left. No chance. Four pin. Didn't get it. Left out of his hand the whole way. You okay? You okay? Breathing. And Dave Diachabot. Except for Cuyahoga Falls. Yeah, it's it still breathing. A little Ohio reference there from Dave Diachabot. Four pin. 
Bears kill me. He's afraid of getting it just a pinch to the right for fear of it hanging. So what does he do? He gets it in. Has no chance of holding line. Double D. Take a breath. This one has been clinched. Thanks, guys. First ever meeting. Thank you. With Steve Jarris coming in the final, Nothing can Steve Jarris win again for the first time this year, become a three-time winner? Deontemont hasn't won since 02. Big drama to follow. Sold out house here in Indy. And coming up next, well, 4 o'clock Eastern anyway on ESPN's Sunday Hockey Special as Billy Garrett, the sniper. What a great snapshot he's got head-to-head -head with the San Jose Sharks. Big game in the Pacific Division. Dallas starting the day four points behind the Sharks. And fourth in the Western Conference, San Jose third as they lead the division. Leading us, Randy, to the Geico Direct Championship recap. Thank you, Dave. Earlier in the wild card match, it was Double D, Dave Deontremont defeating Chris Barnes by the score of 233, 186. Dave threw eight out of 12 strikes, and it was too much for Chris Barnes. Semifinal number one, Steve Jarris defeating Michael Haugen Jr. by the score of 248, 223. Haugen got off to a quick start. Jarris too much down the stretch. And as we just saw, semifinal number two, Double D defeated Jeff Zafino by the score of 181, 169. Double D outlasts. Zafino and overcomes a 7 10 split, setting up a great championship match for the PBA Uniroyal Tire Classic. Our Got Go Direct Championship recap. Eight in a row, the title match in Dallas, getting by Dave Traber. Can he repeat the feat and win a third title? We'll find out. Player of the Year? That's an old picture of Steve Jarris. I don't know if he wants that shown on national TV, but <laughs> it's too late. Dave Diachemont, you had the 7 10 split in the last game in the semifinals. How are you dealing with the pressure now? You haven't won since Wichita of last year. How are the nerves? I'll tell you what, the pressure's off right now. The pressure was coming into this week, the, what, the position I was in on the point list. Uh, you know, this is just icing on the cake. You know, making the, the TV show was a big help now with the extra 4,000 points for finishing second. Let's, me and Steve, let's just get it on. Go get him. good luck. <laughs> Looks like your opponent's ready. <laughs> your wife, June, has been here for your two titles in Toledo and in Dallas. She's here again today. Does that mean this is an automatic win for you? Well, I wouldn't say it's automatic, but let's hope the third time's a charm. Uh, you know, Dave and I were joking before we were hoping we were going to get to bowl each other today, and uh, sure enough, here we are now. So, you know, it's been an unbelievable season, and, um, you know, bowl another great game here, see what happens. Randy, maybe Steve Jarris, player of the year? Possibly. We'll find out. Looks like he's ready to go. And there's wife, June. A lot of players are uh, asking June if she's got a sister. Some of that luck rubbing off. And Steve Jarris is having the best year of his career. Big money on the line, 40,000 for first, 25,000 points. And as you heard Dave Deontremont said, he got rich this week. Finishing second guarantees him a spot in the exempt field for next year. And that is a ball change to start this match, and why not? The last match he shot 186 with the other ball he was using. Looks like he's trying to go a little bit straighter. Six titles, but the last one, as we talked about with Dave a moment ago, October of 02, opening last season in Wichita. Lance is the side of the pin. He'll take it. Okay. That avoids an open. Good thing there was an extra coat of paint on those pins this morning. Just kidding. There's not, but, you know. You could say the wind blew it over, or whatever you want to say. A couple weeks back in Dallas, February 22nd. Game career title number five. He's also on 30 regionals. Oh, a little high there, though. Not the start he wanted with a four and a nine. Going over to get uh, either the spare ball or another. Yep, that's the spare ball. I was hoping I didn't need this. And you know, I like that logic. He left it over there hoping he didn't need it. This ball's a high one. And leaves the 4-9. Got to get the ball left of the 4-pin, slide it into the 9. A brilliant show and a brilliant year for Steve Jarris yet again. However, an open frame, but it is early, leading us to the baby roof. Real deal matchup, Randy. Average advantage, strike percentage advantage. A lot of that having to do with what Dave did the last game. Dave DeAnchemont knows how to strike. And so does Steve Jarris. But he did in the last game, seven of 11 strikes, threw a lot of strikes at me. He's been red hot as of late. Touch high there, four pin up. Started up early. 
Five TV shows. Toledo where he won. Latham, Seattle. Seems like pushing off. Dallas, and now Indy. Wife June and the twins couldn't make it to Latham in Seattle because they found out too late. Ticket prices were way too high. Try to book. And in Seattle, we started pretty early West Coast time. They couldn't get her there in time for the show after he won on Saturday in Tacoma. But she's here again today looking for another victory. He's a one game away from it. She'll be at the World Championship with the Twins in two weeks. When we talk about how tough it is on the tour and the grind, it's uh, probably tougher for the wives and the family at home. The husband's being gone all the time. And Nice shot there by Giacchima, that 20-week grind. Oh, can I go on that lane only, please? He looks good on the right lane, but check out this left lane. Some real issues. Last four frames. 3, 6, 7, 10. Through the face again, 3, 10. Blowout, 7, 10. Ball change. First frame of this match leaves the four pin. Yikes, big trouble on that lane. Help for the 10, no. Trying to go across the deck for number 10, it stays up. And the, the only good news for Dave Yanchma, he finishes on the right lane. With those numbers and our video evidence, he's very glad of that fact. You see Dave Yanchma taking that deep breath and exhaling, almost like he's gasping for wind. I talked to Chris Barnes last night. Close. And asked him if he could it's close. describe what it's like on television trying to make shots and he said well the folks at home think about the first time you tried to ball your six your first 600 your first 700 your first 800 remember that first ball you tried to shoot your first 300 steve Jones comes in high leaves a four pin remember what it felt like when you needed that hit that so little energy or so little oxygen going to your brain that massive adrenaline rush that's how we feel with each and every shot on the telecast Jarrett's done a pretty good job overcoming that kind of pressure. Very good season for Jarrett. TV appearance number five, looking for that third victory of the year. He's down 12 pins here. I can't imagine. This is my second year covering the tour for ESPN and working with you, Randy. How you guys face this drama and pressure, and this year with the exempt tour on the line, even more to deal with. Well, the great champions handle it, obviously, better than the also-rans, but... I think that's what makes a great champion. Steve Jarris is coming into his own, and he is a great champion. Steve Jarris, down 12, looking for title number three on the season. Some three hours before our telecast today here in Indy, folks were lined up, waiting for the top seats. We are sold out. As we see how we got to this point, Unirail Tire Classic, Dave D'Entremont, Bidding for his first title since October of 02. He's won six times on tour. Has a major to his credit at TOC. Been a long time for Double D. Trying to get back in the winner's circle. And yeah, watch it as right. God, I love coming out of commercial. Not been good. Man. This ball hangs again down the lane. Chris Barnes told me after he got done, he came up to the booth, Dave Ryan, and said, that right lane's got some serious hang down the lane. And you can see it right there. Two ten. Tough one. Hit it. Got it. Oh, a huge shot for Diatramon. The side of the two into the ten, leading us to the Unirail Tire. Rock and roll, without question. And this shot right here keeps Dave Diatramon ahead in this game. He's going to get this ball to roll. Just left of the two pin, throws it into the 10. Perfect conversion at a crucial time. Without question, worthy of the Unirail Tire Rock and Roll, and he follows up at the Unirail Tire Classic with a big strike on his trouble lane, lane 69. Jarrett's down 10 pins. Said he overcame a back injury. As he talked to us before the match today, back really tightened up at the start of the week. 
right in the pocket, crushes the rack, shreds off Dan down into the pit. And he really wasn't sure as they got toward qualifying here, the two nine game blocks prior to match play, if he was going to be healthy enough to bowl. And then June came in, probably gave him a massage, and uh, the next thing you know, Steve's bowling for his third title of the year. But Steve's been very, very impressive in what he's been doing with his game, and what he's been doing is just basically keeping it simple. I mean, his motion is effortless. It looks like he's doing absolutely nothing to it. And this ball, when it hits the pitch, strikes every time. And for the turn, late help on the seven. As we saw the max scores, things are very close here at Indy. Our final major and final TV show of the season, folks, coming up two weeks from the EMU campus, Ypsilanti, Michigan. You can get great arena seats still available on the EMU campus, PBA.com, double points, 120 grand, and a five-year five year exemption. Count them, five. Boy, is that ever big. One, two, four, five. Oh. And right now, Dave Bianchmont in a whole lot of trouble on the right lane. Trying to get his ball to face the pocket. Remember the, the shot before in this lane, he, he went light and left the 210 to compensate for that. He tries to get it to finish a little bit harder and it drifts high. Three bagger for Jarris Diantramont. When did he win last? He was the wild card. That was Wichita 02, as we mentioned, got by Patrick Healy Jr., who then won the next week in KC, that was last season. Trouble lane, can he overcome the issues on the left lane? Oh. 10 pin. That was a good shot too. Not a good sign when a player shaking his head in the middle of a championship match. Ken Howard Center was absolutely rocking last night. Right after the round of eight, I mean, filled almost every lane except for the TV pair and the ones we're using to set up our arena setup here in Indy. Jam-packed, and we thank him for his help. And look out, 10-pin up for double D. What? Uh, see this time and time again on the tour when players are trying to figure out how to get their ball to the pocket. A lapse of concentration costs them single-pin spares. Happened to myself this week. Happens to, it happens to us every week. Trying to figure out how to get our ball to strike. We get the job at hand. And right now, Steve Jarris could throw a ping pong ball down the lane and strike. Late trip on the nine, Randy really helps his cause. Now a 32 pin lead as he's got a four bagger going. I mean, he's got pins flying everywhere, tripping out nines, carrying the Wally sevens. Things drastically changing with the open frame in the seventh for Dave Diantrema. You could very well be looking at your next player of the year. And he's got a stranglehold on this match right now with this shot. Just absolutely perfect. And his wife knew how important that shot was, and we heard it from Dave. Money, 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 money. Yeah, heard it from Dave Diantra what trouble that was. The open frame. And Double D is in huge trouble, down 42 pins suddenly. Five bagger for Jarris, in effect. Steve Jarris has got five in a row. His opponent, Dave Diantra, because he can't get his ball to the pocket, is making more moves than Bobby Fischer at a chess tournament, trying to figure out how to get his ball to strike. He has the idea there. Today, ESPN offers up more NBA action. Special day and time. Paul Pierce and the Seas continue their fight for the playoff berth. They visit Kevin Garnett, Kevin Garnett, Sam Cassell, and the T-Wolves, who have been one of the NBA's best teams this season. Tonight, 7.30 Eastern time, NBA special on ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com. T-Wolves lead the Midwest and in that Western Conference. 44-18 record. They've been excellent all year. We show have up. action. Make him show up. But a great year for Steve Jarris, who's won two titles for the first time in his career. Bidding for a third now. Toledo, Dallas, maybe Indianapolis. He's closing in. His wife, June, has seen both titles this year in person. The Twins are being watched right now. 
Well, someone on the PBA Tour, they're four and a half years old. Wow. They probably can't appreciate how great a bowler their daddy is right now. And this is where you can see the mental focus and the concentration being displayed by Steve Jarris. He showed absolutely no emotion. This shot right here was the big shot that all but clinched the title for him, and he showed no emotion going dead flush. All he needs is a mark in the 10th frame, and it, this tournament is his. That's what he needs. Looking for the seven bagger. 10th frame, a little bit high. Man. Does it again. <laughs> wow. Can you believe it? Oh. Oh. Yes. How's this one for the money? Can you say hi, Flush? You bet. While we watch June react to the prior strike, Steve Jarris does yes. it again. And wraps up a third tour title of the season. Randy, plain and simple, June has got to travel with Steve for every single show and every tournament Next year and years beyond, right? That's can, three for three. Can you say homeschool? All right. <laughs> All right. Can I say thank you, Dynasty? Unbelievable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Guess congrats from Steve Miller. It's okay. It's okay. And it's time to raise that trophy, Steve Jarris. Turn that around. One? There you go. <laughs> No one has won three titles on tour this year except for that man from Bolingbrook, Illinois, the smoothest silk right-hander, Steve Jarris. ESPN's exclusive live coverage of the PBA Uniroyal Classic is brought to you by Uniroyal, the official tire of the PBA Tour. Uniroyal Tire is trusted by American families since 1892. By the official candy bar, the PBA, Baby Ruth from Nestle, the real deal. And by Dexter, bowling, golf, and casual, we have the right shoe for you. This is becoming a regular sight. Steve Jarris winning for the third time on tour this year with his wife, June, the twins, Evan and Hannah. Be sure to join us in two weeks for this season's final major, the PBA World Championship from Eastern Michigan University. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Coming up live on ESPN, stay with us, 2004 Franklin Templeton Classic from Scottsdale, Arizona. It's tennis. Now for the entire crew, my partner Randy Peterson, it's Dave Ryan saying so long from Indy. What a moment, what a day for Steve Jarris. <laughs>